tip. A little shitty. Okay. Shitting is a thing here in South Africa where, well, because of the esca Look, the electric company, whatever, gives you the power. They're the only ones in town. And throughout the years, with this, you know, the that, the that, the that, the that, they won't develop that, the that, the that. I get this one in time. Okay. It's a. This bad boy. If I show you Devil's Peak, what? Oh, this is a. This is an ornate. One of those. It's really not really a bottle opener, but it's like a, one of those. You get it from a flea market and stuff like that. But you say devil's big. Are you doing the work of the devil? Actually, you know, devil's <laughs> This is when the craft beer came. This used to be a craft beer boom, right? This so is what happened with the big companies. What they did was they bought the taps out. You know, the taps. First they did that. Was that what it was? Anyway, the, the big companies went and took over the craft beer. But now, what that means, instead of just being sold in the Cape Town area, it now is being delivered actually to Alice. I think I'm the only one that buys it because um, <laughs> I heard somebody says, what's that? I said, no, you can't do it. You're a Christian, right? And that's the devil's, de devil's work. You leave this alone. I love, I love messing with Christians. That's just a Sunday. No, you're saying, right? oh, by the way, so this is alcoholic. I don't know how many percentage this is. Whatever, whatever the be. Oh, 4%. And this is a Guinness brand non-alcoholic malt drink. All right, I got this from the uh, Nigerian shop in town. Hey, not, not even a shop. She does some business, but she imports these. Now you say, well, a non-alcoholic, you're putting a nut on with. Why are you putting a non-alcoholic well, drink? Very sweet. And your thingy here, and you're gonna mix it with alcohol? Let me see. The beer, my beer preference is Guinness, like real Guinness. The first had Guinness when I was in my, when I was in uh, Belize. And when I, when I found out, I said, you know, Guinness, the way they do it around the world, they, they license breweries, whatever it is, and like that. Actually, the best Guinness is supposed to be out of Nigeria. Now, now the funny thing is, when I was in, um, in uh, Edinburgh, Scotland, I was, doing, I was doing a show, I was directing a show. It's a really good show. Uh, it, was like, uh, it was like a woman's on the show. Uh, the, the, the woman who did the show, she, she wrote it and uh, she had these, all these women and then we'd only perf uh, perform four a night, right? And then the next night we take out one or two and replace it like that. So you'd always have a different show. Too late that I remember, I said, damn, because we were there for two, three, three weeks, whenever it was. Um, too late, I, I said, we should, what we should have done was have, uh, have a show. Then if you saw a show, then you can come back with a ticket like two for one the next night, you know what I mean? Well, Edinburgh, you know, you gotta do your thing. Anyway, so it's a Sunday morning. Let me tell you how, and oh, oh, let's go back to Guinness. The best Guinness is supposed to be come from Nigeria. That's how I talk to this lady. She says, oh, because somebody said she had Guinness. Actually, she has this, this other Guinness. Like that, like, looks like Guinness. And so, so I'm going, wow, this is so sweet. If I mix it with a lager, right, then maybe I have something close to Guinness, right? That's what I thought. Oh, you know. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how it tastes. Not bad. Not sweet. Not a good idea. Got to be inventing. So look. Talk about travel. I'll tell you the trip I took one time. I was in uh, Thailand, north of Thailand, Pai, Pai Thailand. I love Pai Thailand. It's a spiritual, very special place. You know, we end up going to these spiritual places. Anyway, so I wanted to go to Laos. So what you do is you take a, a I, was a, I was in the Chiang Mai, well, Pai is down from Chiang Mai, it's up top. In fact, it's a good, uh, Henry Marconi did, a, did a, uh, a cut called Chiang Mai in one of his films. I like it. Anyway, so, uh, uh, so you take a boat, right? Now you can take a fast boat or a slow boat. Take the fast boat. So they both entered the same place. You know, it's, just a, it's, it's like a halfway between um, whatever we were in, in Thailand, that large place until uh, Long Provence, which is the largest city in the northern Thailand. That's where you want to go. Okay, so, but you end up in this other, this little village, you know, uh, for overnight, for overnight stay. So let's take the fast boat, like, put the helmets on, and you get there real fast. I don't know why, there's nothing in the village. And then, or you take the slow boat. So I was on the slow boat, plus it's cheap on the slow boat. And, you know, when I travel, I should tell, I travel without, I won't get that, I travel without money, I have the time. So on this boat, 
And so there was this guy, you know, white guy, old, you know, middle-aged guy. And so he wouldn't talk. So if you know me, I, I start messing with people, right? So I start messing with people, you know, blah, 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 blah. I didn't say, oh, you a spy, nothing like that, you know what I mean? Because, you know, we're on the Macon River. And so I kept on messing with people. Anyway, there was another guy, another white guy, middle-aged guy. He was on, he was on the boat, and he, uh, and we got to talking. Now, I've been, uh, and he ended up, he owned the, gal owned the gallery in, uh, I think it's, uh, San Miguel, someplace in Mexico that I've been, you know, because it was a tourist town, a lot of art galleries. So I knew what he was talking about. So we got to talking. Now, I, uh, let me go back just a little bit. This is, uh, when for this trip, this is like, uh, oh, this is uh, 2000 something, 2003, 2000, 2004. Um, but for, I, there's a thing, in the New York, there's a thing called a, a School of Visual Arts. Right? And I was a model, an artist model, you know. For school, school of Visual Arts for about uh, eight years. For the first four years, you know, this model, but the second four years, let me put it this way, you're not going to believe this. But I was so good, I'm such a good model, that the model registrar, Vincent, he's, he, he wouldn't allow me to model the next four years. I was just a sitting there and do the, the inventory, stuff like that. And I would only go to a class if there was a problem. And I was such, such, such a reputation, I'm talking about among the, the staff, the, 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 the instructors, that they knew if I had to come, there was a problem, and 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 it's, I, well, let me try, oh, this is a very interesting dynamic. Now, at that, uh, and sometimes I give up this real, real macho vibe. I mean, like really, you could, it pops off of me. Not right now. You can't see now. I'm like an old guy. Right but Vincent was effeminate. Like that. No, this is this, this is a classic. You know, effeminate guy. This is not these these gay guys that went in there. Actually, one time, but you could, you could tell. You know, these uh, you know, calling no names. I, I guess well, I'm not gonna. He used the modern terms. But you know, he, he's, he's cool, but Vincent's cool, a very smart cat, right? I saw him one time in a village, the, the school of visual arts was on 23rd Street, but, uh, and the east side. I saw him in the, in the village one time, he was really flaming, you know, he's got the thing, the da 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 da, da whoa. So you know, he, he could delineate between, you know, the, the gay life, if you want, and the work life, right? But the dynamic was such, in the, in the office, I would sometimes sit out of the office, that it would be, the, the office will have this gay vibe, but then you have this super macho guy vibe. It was amazing. It was amazing. Me and Vincent got around fat, great. I won't say fabulously because then you're the ah. No, no, no. Me and Vincent was cool. I, mean, I really like Vincent. Um, I think he's passed by now. I don't know. Anyway, peace and blessings on his soul if he is. If he isn't, hey, Vincent, this is for you. Anyway. To show you how bad the and, and, and staff, you know, the, the, the owners of the school, it's the roads. I mean, it's, it's like a plantation. Right? Sometimes I wear dark glasses and I just sit out there, and because because of what I did, I be I be I be I be toked up. You know what I mean? So one time I was sitting there, and when the younger guy came by, they wanted, they were brothers. You know what I mean? One brother's pretty. This was the dumb brother. You know, he he, he the no talent brother. He came by and he says, he says to me, now I'm very quick when I think. He says to me. Oh, why are you wearing glasses inside? I said, to keep out the bad elements. She just kept on going. Anyway, I digress. So, so I'm talking to this guy that owns this gallery in uh, San Miguel, wherever it was. And uh, I said, you know, so oh, so one more thing. So one of the things that happened that I realized uh, um, that I did, a, I, this woman, this girl, did a, did a huge thing of me. And when she, she was, and her first thing when she graduated the school, she sold that thing for $2,000. Okay, back then in uh, 80 or whatever it was, it was that was a lot of money. Okay, so I was talking to her, I said, you know, it's so unfair uh, because you know, as an artist, the, the, you know, if you work with a, 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 an artist and you're the model, shouldn't you? They, you should get paid some sort of residuals, you know, at least the first or second or third transfer of that of that thing, because those pit, uh, things make it worth a lot of money later on. And they, I mean, why don't the model? The model is the source. I mean, the model is the, the model is the model. You know, like I have this thing here. And so, and I said, hey, she could play better than that. Anyway, I'm up here talking to him. And then we, um, uh, and then he says, I do that. Now, this, this is very interesting. Here we are, here we are, I mean, in Laos, Mexico's over the other side of the world. And what's the likelihood of me meeting somebody on a boat in Laos that basically does what, to, does what, I, what we talked about? I mean that's that's the kind of weird spiritual things that happens to me when I'm on when I'm you know when I'm on the road I'm doing I'm doing the uh, the thing I'm doing a floor picture here but don't worry about it if I don't find it. So anyway, so that's that's, that's the one. Now here's the thing, the Mekong River. Now okay, so I'm sorry, 
that halfway point, I spent, usually you just go there one, you know, one night, you know, it's an overnight thing, and then, then you leave the next morning. I stayed for like 11 days, you know. Now they sell, they sell a beer that called Beer Lao. Great beer, this beer is so good. What it was, when the French left, they left the brewery, and so they brought in this big German, German guy to find out, you know, what they should do. And the German guy says, don't do anything, it's such a good beer. It's an instant competition, it, sure enough, it, it, it was such a good beer, they didn't need to do anything. So, what happens is that beer, just, it's just like it was in the 1950s, 60s, whatever, you, you, you drinking this beer. Same thing with the uh, baguettes, you know, the, the bread. And same thing, they didn't do anything with that. They kept, kept it the way it was. Okay, so, well, here's what I'm gonna show you. See, this, this is a book, a book and a CD, I think it was, and it's a Pete Seeger's story uh, song, Pete, Pete Seeger's story song. And if you see, it has a South African theme, because, you know, Pete Seeger did that, Lion Speaks Tonight, whatever it is. So you see that? Now you see there's a young kid there. You see the older guy doing that? That's actually me. It's back in my modeling days, right? So I modeled for this couple. So if you ever see this book, I got to get it. A Darcy told me one time she found it. It's like a children's section. So I got to get that. I can't even pronounce it. Uh, I'll be... Abi Yoyo, Abi Yoyo, see Pete Seeger, includes audio CD of Pete Seeger, like that. So, see, I'm an artist, man. I mean, you, don't have to, you don't have to always uh, uh, pose, pose dude, right, but that's what it is. Anyway, back to the story. So, um, in this town, you know, it was, it was a weird because, you know, they get, when the people are coming in at 4 or 5 o'clock, the town gears up for them. And then when they leave at 7 or 8 in the morning, right, the town reverts back to the town. You know, they, throw all, they put all the blankets out and blah, blah, blah. But then they the, 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 the found the village. The village activities happening. They slaughter a cow in the middle of the street, whatever. Well, it's not true. But they do. So I would walk a different way each day. I was there for like 11 days. After a while, they just left me alone. Instead of being a dollar sign, they said, oh, this guy ain't giving us no money. It's left us alone. But the gears where the tourists coming in and everything's selling this beer loud because it's so good. It's so good, they won't even allow it into Thailand, right? It'll, it'll destroy the beer bar in the town. In fact, Thailand did this thing they call a beer leo in Thailand <laughs> to confuse people. I mean, I guess I don't know if they worked it out, but that's what, that's what they did. Secret things, man. So anyway, and so in fact, in fact, I walked a loop. You know, in 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 in, a, in, a, in a un unedited film of Apocalypse Now, there's this French kind of thing in the um, in the middle of nowhere, this uh, chateau, whatever it is. Well, I found him walking one way. It was this like real laid out place. I guess it's just for rich people to come. It's very interesting, maybe for the French. And there's another place, another place I walked, and, you know, they had the temples up there, you know, then they had the, the monks up there. They the, the monks up there were, 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 doing, um, were doing opium. You learn a lot when you just, you know, you just stop being a tourist and you start, like, living. Anyway, I want to say, because when we were on the Mekong River, and I'm going like, man, I can see why they lost the war in Vietnam because the Mekong, all around is like jungle, all the way up. You could be, you can be a good sniper. You just got to boom, boom, boom. It's like ducks in a in a pond, you know, whatever crabs in a whatever they call it, thing like that. That's what it was like. Very, very, very interesting. So the war thing is like, why do why do these cats go to war? It don't make no sense. If he was on that Mekong River, he was going like, what? Why would he even send the troops down this river? It doesn't make no sense. You, people would die. So if you have it, so my thing is we get a bunch of war markers and they make money off of war. Now let me try to bring this all home to something. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a point. Oh, by the way, I got my, I, I, I'm going to, um, uh, well, it used, used to be called Graham Town. Now, now you, you still know it as Graham Town, but it's called um, Americana, after the Americana, uh, uh, one of the Americana chiefs that was at, uh, at uh, what you call Robin Island, and he's supposed to have escaped, swam, or whatever have you, but they never found him, and uh, it's a whole, whole thing, so whole, whatever it is. Anyway, so, so oh, one more thing. When I was doing that, uh, now I'll leave that for another time, that, the Edinburgh. Let me finish the Edinburgh. Edinburgh thing was interesting about Edinburgh. They had this really great beer there called, I think it was Golden Harvest. It was an organic beer. It was like, I went crazy over the tap on Golden Harvest. It's really strange. And when you go, when you're black and some other kind of circumstances, things, interesting, interesting things happen because the show, in the show, you know, I was a director. Um, and then you had the author, then you had the DJ, and then you had the, this, uh, this um, German woman playing count, counter bass. So it's like three women, three white women, and, and me. Uh, when I got there, we could, this is the height of, of, 
they're not picking up black people in New York City. I'll tell you a funny story about that one, one other time. But anyway, when I got there and I did like that, and that, those taxis went, shh, I said, wow, I'm jumping up there catching taxis all the time because I'm, so I, I digress. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make this point like this. You, you, there are things like in the Bible, I think of y'all since we're on a Sunday, and I know it's a Sunday in Alice, and you're saying, well, why are you drinking on a Sunday morning? Well, what happens on a Sunday morning is the men, they get in a little circle, they go down by what I call it a river, but it's not really a river, it's like a little canal. And they get in a little circle, and they get their beer, you know, the black label, whatever it is, and they be drinking like that. The women are in church. Nigerians, I'm actually talking about my multiple, Nigerians are different because they go to church to make deals like that. And some actually believe, you know, I don't know how you can believe in a white Jesus, but they do. Mm. Okay, one more little point on this. Uh, no, I'll do that some other time. Okay, so here's what I'm saying. I'm looking at this uh, ADUS, and what can we do? What can it What can it do? And I say, wow, it could stop war. <laughs> the ADUS reality, what I call it the reality, ADUS movement, ADUS reality movement, can actually st stop this whole military thing. Very simple, very simple. Uh, first of all, here's my, let me tell you, right now, here's my choice for the, this, uh, President and Vice President, you know, like, uh, uh, it's not that voting is, uh, here's my thing for, for uh, President Vice President. President, Chelsea Gabbard, Vice President, Andrew Wang. Why? Well, I'll tell you. Chelsea Gabbard is, is the only one that's talking about no war, no intervention, whatever, except not, whatever, whatever, like that. So, that. I guess I'm doing identity policy because I'm a veteran and I know about war. Well, the problem right now is not a lot of people have been in the service in the military, even right now in this ADUS movement. There's no, a lot of people are sniping, they ain't never been in no, come on, they saying stuff, they ain't never been in a troop group, they don't know what it is to follow orders, they don't, they, they just willy nilly jump and saying anything they want. They have no idea, they ain't been trained in nothing like that. But look, a classic example is, is something like the Breakfast Club, you know, none of them are trained as, as journalists. I'm not saying you have to be trained as a journalist, but you know, there's a lot of people just jumping out there not trained, you know? And, and this whole thing actually started. I have to go to something else. But anyway, my point is, so Tulsa Gabbard because big because of the war thing. And basically it doesn't really matter if you who's I don't say it doesn't matter who's president, you, who you surround yourself with, okay? Vice President Andrew Wayne, he said, Well again, what's going on? There's nobody there's no politician in there. That's right. But remember, vice president's also like a ceremonial job, and he's and that person has got a de 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 deciding vote in the Senate, whatever happened. So he said, "But what happens? To, what about Bernie? What about put them people back in the Senate? That's where they belong." Be Elizabeth Warren does a better job in the Senate than she would do, ever do as president, or vice president. She'd be handcuffed. You see what I'm saying? Same thing. Oh, Booker and or whatever. Yeah, psh, come on, here. You don't go work on our reparations deal in the Senate. You, you two, go go do that, Bernie. But, so now, now all you have to do is keep on getting more, more senators in there, right? Meanwhile, Andrew Wang, with his idea, this is very important, of a universal, you know, whatever, whatever. What this does, as far as how it impacts the movement, to me, see, if you just give, if you give reparations to, to black people, there's going to be a big, big, big problem because the white people will go, oh yeah. But with Andrew Wang, it'll, it'll call ameliorate the, the, the white people, it, it, and then everybody will get money, including black people, and under his scheme. But then also, the white people won't won't be now fighting us because we took some resources because they'll have resources to do what they do. Our reparations will be on top of that. It'll be something different. You got it? You can work. You can sort of figure out what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I took, went through this whole beer story. Just to tell you what I told you about, you know, plus, you know, in the, in the middle of the military, they, 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 they had these uh, 3.2 beers and the regular beers, 3.2 beers with one base, you know, these pitchers be drinking, nah, nah, nah. okay, I'm going to stop the beer story. So, anyway, so think about this. Really, 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 really think about this. When you, when you, see, voting and all this, what we're doing, is a strategy. It's really a strategy. So my strategy at this particular point, like I said, you put some of his presence that's against war. Therefore, you take all that war, that war sucking out those, those that Lockheed Martin, all those, those, those companies. Yeah, hey, forget them. Hey, what about those jobs? Tough luck. We got more people to, to, to do. You see, you see what I'm saying? And then, of course, you got the universal basic income. Then with Andrew Wang, plus he's sort of small, so he can figure some other stuff and do some other stuff. And he's, he's a face. A lot of times they send a vice president around the world to do stuff. So you know, you know, 
they see it. They see a, Ch a, a, a Asian guy. They go like, ah, yeah, Asian guy. We're the next one. <laughs> and then the women get that thing. And black people, we get our reparations. Why? Because we stopped the war. We stopped all war. This is helping everybody around the planet. And all these, these especially these bankers, we jump, jump, jump again. Let's be war back in the thing. We jump on the bankers, get our money back from them. Hey, good plan, I'd say. I ping uh, me, T, from the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet. Letting you know what I only suspect from a desk of the ADUS. <coughs> oh, sneeze, excuse me.